Ladies and gentlemen, you might be wondering why I've chosen to talk about balloons today. Well, to get an idea of just how serious balloons can be, look at this image. Now, that looks quite serious, doesn't it? This scene is from a charity event in Cleveland in 1986. Now infamously referred to as Balloon Fest 86, it involved the release of nearly 1.5 million balloons. There were so many balloons in the air that it resulted in the airport being shut down, traffic accidents, and the cancellation of a search and rescue mission carried out by the Coast Guard to locate two missing fishermen whose bodies eventually washed up on shore. Of course, this is a particularly morbid piece of balloon trivia, but it's not all doom and gloom when it comes to balloons. Let me share with you now the photo that got me thinking about balloons recently. Now, isn't that glorious? You might notice that it is a gift basket in the form of a hot air balloon. But what intrigued me most about this photo, which I saw on social media, was that this balloon had several smaller balloons inside it. Immediately, I needed to find out how to do that so I can impress my friends with my party decorating skills. You see, I suspect that when we go back to having parties, we will go absolutely bonkers, completely mad. We will definitely need balloons for that party. Can you imagine the level of excitement we'll have for the first party post-pandemic? We'll want to stuff everything, the chicken, our face, each other, and the balloons. So, I lost no time at all, and I googled how to stuff balloons inside a balloon. And I stumbled upon a website that explained the procedure quite well. It's really not that complicated. I was somewhat disappointed that I didn't figure it out on myself, really. I won't be telling you how to do that today, as that's not the purpose of my speech. I merely wanted to share my own journey of discovery. You see, as I scrolled through this website, I read sentences that suggest to me that balloon stuffing is more serious than I had ever bothered to consider. Here's a sample of those sentences. It starts off with, So, how do you stuff a balloon? Let's first look at how to do it without a balloon stuffing machine. If you plan on selling stuffed balloons as a way to grow an existing balloon business, you need to invest in a balloon stuffing machine. The art of putting smaller balloons into a larger one has evolved over the years. These gumballs, as they are called by the professionals, are great to add an extra accent to your balloon centerpiece or balloon column. Now my curiosity had peaked. First of all, I had never seen the words evolve, professional or centerpiece used when talking about balloons before. They were very adult-sounding words that were being associated with a child's plaything, I thought. Secondly, never before had I considered that balloon artists could be a profession. But of course it can be. It's just not one of the ones you're encouraged to aim for as a child. I'd heard grown-ups ask me if I want to be a doctor, engineer, lawyer or accountant, but no one ever mentioned that secret option of being a balloon artist. Anyway, thanks to this website which explained how to stuff balloons, I was reminded that adults can appreciate balloons too and that there is a market for balloons as party decorations or publicity stunts like the Balloon Fest 86. So naturally, there are professional balloon artists who make their living creating beautiful displays and decorations out of balloons. I wanted to know more about these professionals so I kept researching about the balloon industry. On one of the websites I visited, I saw something that caught my eye. Certified Balloon Artist. Yes, it turns out, if you really want to, you could throw away your whole career, become a certified balloon artist, and inflate balloons for a living. Tempting, isn't it? How, do you ask? According to their website, you just need to pass a written exam, and after gaining sufficient hands-on experience, Qualitex recommends two years, you have to pass a four-hour-long practical exam with a score of 80% or higher. That is more stringent requirements than some of the professional certifications that I currently have. That's quite a commitment indeed. And I never imagined that adults could be so interested in balloons. Little did I know then that balloon professionals are only one breed of people who enjoy balloons as adults. Of course, there are also balloon amateurs. Still curious, I kept searching for more resources on balloons for adults. Eventually, I discovered a whole new world. Lunars. 
The world is vast indeed, and people are varied with diverse likes and preferences. So at this point, it should come as no surprise that there are people on this wide earth who are sexually aroused by balloons. Yes, there is such a thing as balloon fetish. And people who have this fetish call themselves loonies. Not to be confused with loonies, because loony is the word for a crazy person, while lunar describes a person with a sexual attraction to balloons. I'm sure there must be some overlap between the two, but for the most part, they are two separate groups. I don't have enough time to tell you much more about the colourful world of lunars, but do a Google search and you'll be quickly acquainted with the lifestyle. And if you're feeling really adventurous, you can turn off the safe search option. Now I've shared with you my experiences with balloons, including my most recent discovery of them as an adult, I can't be sure how you've taken it. Myself, I found it all very amusing, but I also found it refreshing to consider that there really are so many things on this earth to find pleasure in. So, I urge you not to write off all that I've said today as frivolous and pointless, but to reconsider it, perhaps substituting balloons with something else that you might have thought insignificant up to now. Personally, by being curious, I've managed to inspire myself to have more conviction in my pursuits, no matter how small they might seem. I mean, if thousands of people can be so unapologetically excited for balloons, I can be excited about learning new languages or about mangoes or or anything else under the sun. But by being curious, I've also learned how to stuff balloons. So I'll be quite prepared to have some impressive decorations when we start having parties again. And at the very least, I've reminded myself that with enough creativity, you can have sex with just about anything. And while I practice social distancing and wait for parties to become a thing again, perhaps that's not a completely useless reminder. Thank you again for listening to me talk about balloons, and stay curious.